It was signature moments. It's the dunk. It's the three. It's the layup at the end of the game. This dude is unbelievable. Well, first off, anybody out there who wants to challenge me on this, please do so. I think it's the best dunk I've seen in NBA playoff history. History. It's on Malik Beasley, 6'4". He drives down the lane. He takes off two feet from the third stripe and cocks it back. Cock back the, the, insane, the, yeah. the, the cock back is the one that makes it different, man, because he leans into it, but he brings the ball down by his waist almost and leans on it and then rocks on it. And then the stare and the, you know, everybody's doing this thing now where they put the hand all the way down to the ground, calling you like a little mouse in the house. It's the whole energy around it. I mean, other than, look, Scotty had a great dunk against, you know, Patrick Ewing. Kobe had a great reverse windmill. Sean Kemp had a big time one. Um, John Starks on Blister, Horace Grant. John Starks. Michael Jordan had one over Patrick Ewing. But I, this might be the greatest dunk I've seen in NBA playoff history. Challenge me. Please, challenge me. Bring it. It's up there, Key. It's up there. The, the, the look of it was unbelievable, right? It's not Now, it's not on someone like Patrick Ewing that's it, or, or, or Horace Grant or someone like that even. But the way it looked was insane. But also, Max, like, I, I'm really worried about Memphis. Obviously, I picked Memphis to get to the NBA Finals. Uh, we're going to see what kind of challenge they have if they're able to get by Minnesota going to play Golden State. But I've now seen Minnesota not know how the hell to close games. Game three, you're up 21 points. Chris Finch has a call timeout on a 21-0 run. They lose that game. They're the up 11. Got them going. Yeah, they're up last night 11. Yeah. Again, they can't close out games. And then Anthony Edwards, I know it always doesn't come down to one play. But as a young player in a game of basketball, don't going cheat the, the play. Yeah, he's going for the don't steal. Don't go for the steal. That's such a rookie, young player mistake. Stay under it and just force Ja to take a really tough shot over your size That's the and your length. That's when he That's went by to the left. But, by the way, that, that kind of obscures the fact that Anthony Edwards just hit a huge three right before that to tie it up. But, I, but I'm saying, so, I, I, I hear, I, and I'm not taking anything away from Memphis. But what I'm saying is, Memphis is not going to have the same luxury, Max, yeah, in their yeah. next round when they go against Golden State. Because if Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and Jordan Poole have a 21-point lead, that lead is going to balloon to 40 points. The history of They're the not going to let that thing go. The history of the league is a young team, first they have to learn how to win. Then they have to learn how to win on the road in the playoffs, right? Step by step, it usually takes a couple years to get there. This Memphis team is so precocious, though, and Ja is so good, you, it has you wondering, like, can they do it right now? I thought he had a chance to be finals MVP this year, Jai. You thought they had a chance to be in the finals. But games like this where it takes everything they have to just get by Memphis, uh, to just get by uh, Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota, make you wonder what's going to happen as it gets tougher. By the way, you want to hear John on the final bucket? Yeah. Time for Straight Talk brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Here he is. Can you take us through the last play? The Go get a bucket, Ja. <laughs> I mean, when that's... The, the, that's the thing about the NBA, Jay. The reason, oh, it doesn't just come down to ISO, hero, ball, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but when you are wondering which team is going to win and you think it's really close, you do ask yourself, who has that guy? Well, who but, has the go-get-a-bucket job guy? So let me give you the difference between the two teams. The play that was drawn up after the timeout was brilliant by Minnesota. It was a back screen. Anthony Edwards dives to the corner. Hits him with a crisp pass, knocks down the big three, right? So a play designed for Anthony Edwards. And then you hear Ja Morant, just go get a bucket, Ja. Flat out ISO, get out of my way, let me do my thing. And it's a hell of a pass by Dylan Brooks and a hell of a play by Ja Morant. It makes, it makes me wonder, though, like if it takes Minnesota 23 turnovers in this game, right? I think it's the second most that they've had in playoff history for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Ja's doing incredible things, and I hear Desmond Baines out there like a beast. But, man, like how many things need to go their way in order for them to win these last couple of games this way? Yeah, it's interesting because they went 21-2, and two, whatever it was, without Ja, and they don't have the same kind of winning percentage with him. But I, I guess they're trying to figure out also on the fly, Jay, how to stay a team like a well-oiled machine team, like the guy, like with the teams we've been talking about, the Bulls on, sorry, the, the Heat on defense, the Bucks as a unit, the Celtics, both ends of the floor, right? Can they do that and have an ISO-crazy superhero scorer put them over the top instead of disrupt what the rest of the team does? They're still, to me, a little figuring that out. Agree. And my thing is, you know, look, 
<laughs> what is it? stupid is as stupid does. Like bad teams find ways to lose games. And I'm not saying that Minnesota is a bad team, but it's like the, the lack of experience. Think about this entire playoff series, Max. Carl Anthony Towns staying in the game in the first half in foul trouble. A 21-point lead that's blown, and they go on a 21-0 run. Minnesota doesn't call a timeout. You have a double-digit lead going into the fourth quarter again, and you just can't close this game. Realistically, Minnesota is more talented than Memphis, but Memphis has had a better closer because the opportunities they've been giving by Minnesota down the stretch. Meantime, you want to know how impressive Ja is around the league, right? Here is Eric Spolstra, one of the great coaches in professional team sports, multiple-time champion and basketball fan at the Heat post-game presser. Well, listen to this. If you want the update, Ja hit a layup to win it. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Yes. TD, how come we don't have the TVs on in here? <laughs> I thought this was going overtime for sure. I should have known better. <laughs> Should have known better. I did see the highlight of that dunk, though. Hey, so Eric Spolstra, who is probably a top two, top three NBA coach yeah. in the game today. Yeah. Right? You can make an argument that he may be number one. He's going to the Hall of Fame. Hall yeah. of Famer. Yeah. Right? It's saying, how come we don't have the damn TVs on? Like, that's him wanting to see John ja Morant it's play. It's must-see TV, bro. All the time, yeah. man. Yeah. And then the trash talking, all of it combined – him and Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards. Like, this is a young rivalry that we have to pay attention to By for way, years to come. Even the description, he hit a layup to win it, doesn't do it justice. justice. That's not just a layup. That's like, what he go up in the air. What am I going to do with this? What's the defense going to give me? Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.